Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how I made a bunk bed for my kids. Now, if you want to make this for adults, there are quite some changes which we will talk about in the course of this video. This project essentially has a lot of measuring, a lot of cutting and a lot of welding. Don't skip the video if you don't know how to weld. Watch this video till the end. Not only does that help my channel grow, but you'll understand that understanding the concept of it is more important. You can always get it made by someone else and let me tell you, the cost will be a lot cheaper compared to what you would buy online or from a regular furniture shop. Apart from that, you could do a lot of customizations. I'm not even talking about the colors or the materials or the design. Let's say you have clearance for fitting a particular cot of a particular size. Maybe you want it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller. You can do all that when you're building it by yourself. If you approach a manufacturer or a maker, they're going to charge you extra because they're going to make something which is not in their template. It is your project, so you can do all of that with no additional cost. With all that said, I'm Josh and welcome to my channel Video Epo. If you've not subscribed to my channel already, please do so. This is a growing channel and I could do with every little bit of support I can get. Let's dive into the video. First off, I'm going to spare you from all those cutting, grinding and welding shots because this project essentially is all about making correct measurements, making the right cuts and most importantly, making a proper 90 degree joint. Now, in the case of wood, when you put two pieces of wood together and you glue it up, it is going to stay there. But metal, it likes to expand with heat. So when you're welding, you're essentially heating the metal to temperatures which can melt the metal itself, which means it will definitely expand. And in that process, it is going to skew in a lot of different ways. To avoid all of that, you can have fancy clamps that kind of hold things in place. But I don't have that. So what I'll do is I'll make some tack welds and use a hammer to bring them to the 90 degree and make sure everything is proper and weld it again. So this is there is going to be a lot of welding and grinding, making corrections and then welding again. So I'm going to spare you from all of that and let's stick to the main concept of the video. For the legs of the bed, I will be using these 1.5 inches square tube. Thickness of the material is 1.6 millimeter and these tubes are cut to a length of 5 feet, which will be the height of the bed consisting of two racks. There are four pieces of these tubes and for the rest of the cot, I will be using 1 inch square pipes. The thickness of these pipes is 1.4 mm. As I had mentioned earlier, this bed is for my kids. If you want to make something for adults, consider using 2 mm thick square pipes for the body and at least 3 mm thick pipes for the feet. As a beginner, I used to make this mistake quite a lot and I wanted to point it out here. Sometimes I would forget to compensate for the thickness of the pipe itself. If I need the length to be 6 feet which is 72 inches and then add 2 1 inch pipe on either side, the length would increase to 74 inches which is 6 feet plus 2 inches. If we press forward with this mistake, the bed might be longer or taller than desired and parts may not fit. If all goes well, the standard size of the plywood would either be 5, 6 or 7 feet. So instead of a 6 feet plywood, I would need to get a 7 feet plywood just to compensate for that gap and material gets wasted. Material wasted, money wasted. Another issue is that there will be a hole like this after the weld. This will become a haven for insects and thus must be covered. It can be done by welding a small piece of metal here, but then this metal piece has a thickness of 2 mm which again needs to be compensated. To counter this, we can either go with a mitre cut, this way the length and the breadth of the workpiece will not be altered. There is yet another option which is, I can remove material from three sides of one pipe and use the fourth side to cover the second pipe. The overall length may extend by 2.8 mm which is negligible considering that there will be a bed and bed sheets on it later. So this is the kind of joint I was talking about. Here you can see that the joints are welded and finished. Let us not worry about the welding seams for now, we can fix that later. Once I finish the main bed frame which is 72 inches by 30 inches, I cut the ribs that would be welded in the cross section of the frame. This would be used to support the plywood which is going to be placed on top. Again compensating for the dimensions of the outer frame, these ribs were not cut to a length of 30 inches but cut to a length of 28 inches which is 30 inches minus 2 inches. 
One more thing to note here is when we take measurements, sometimes we measure from the outside edge of the tube and sometimes from the inner edge of the tube. This sometimes causes 1 mm difference because of the play in the measuring tape. This feature on the measuring tape is not a fault, on the contrary, it is there for us to make correct measurements. But if we don't use it properly, this very feature can become a problem. When that happens or if that happens, don't panic and pound the tube into the frame. It will distort the frame. So take your time and grind the excess material and gently tap the ribs into its respective positions. In case length of this particular pipe is shorter, I'm sorry, your welding is going to be a little problematic. Once the two main frames are made, it is better to make a note on which side they face and their orientation. Instead of having two workpieces being skewed in opposing directions, it would be less of a problem to have them skewed in the same direction which can be fixed with relative ease. Next I proceed to weld the legs on the bottom rack. You can see I am flipping the workpiece because the legs are to be welded on the face downside. Once done, the frame was flipped back to the original position. Now this serves as a base on which the four main legs can be welded. Once the 1.5 inch main legs are welded, the structure is now strong enough to stand on its own. Now for the second rack or shelf or whatever you want to call it, I've clamped some scrap metal pipes and I've placed the second frame on top of them, basically using these things as support. I checked the measurements again and I welded this one to the legs as well. This is when I noted that a 1.4 mm thick pipe is not strong enough when it is extending up to 6 feet. Maybe adding a ladder at the 3 feet mark may give some support is what I thought. So I added ladder on both sides to make sure the mainframe doesn't bend much. The problem did not go away completely so I added another square pipe to remove the bending. So what I would like to suggest is uh, try and use a 2 inch by 1 inch pipe at least for this main frame. Lastly on the top frame I added a safety rail so that the person sleeping on top doesn't roll and fall to ground. The safety rail has the pipe bent like this which was made in a hydraulic machine from a shop. I must admit that I got scammed there so try and skip this step or maybe watch some videos and learn how to do this by yourself. The top end of the main feet, the 1.5 inch tube, was covered with decorative spheres and the bunk bed is almost complete. Now to get to the final finish, the welding seams are not uniform. I am not sure if it is even possible with arc welding on thin metal pipes like these. But all these gaps can be filled with metal paste. Metal paste comes in various types. This one is a generic inexpensive two-part mixture which when mixed together dries up in less than 5 minutes. After applying the putty and sanding it down, a coat of red oxide was applied using a brush. This coating would help the paint adhere better and prevent the metal from rusting. Then this whole frame was pre-painted with matte black. Now it was time to take it inside and place the plywood on both the racks. After placing the plywood on both of the racks, it looks something like this. I had to cut notches on the plywood to accommodate it onto the frame. You can avoid all that by planning properly. My son was complaining about air circulation and a pedestal fan can solve that problem. In case if you are going to make this for adults, I would recommend you to use uh, 2 mm thick square piping at least for the uh, couple of the main frames and that's because it kind of gives you uh, extra stability. Better yet, you could go for 2 inch by 1 inch uh, metal piping which will kind of erase the requirement of additional reinforcements. You don't need that actually because the material I used was intended for some other purpose by I, but I ended up making a bunk bed out of it. I was only trying to make my kids happy and they are quite happy with what they've got. And I've used only spray paint for the entire job. And that's because I know what my kids would do to the cot after a couple of months. I've got an air compressor and I can paint it whenever I want to. But if you're looking at a permanent solution, I would recommend going for a powder coating. Overall, I'm quite happy how this project turned out to be. The kids are happy too. The cot has been installed and the kids have been using it for almost a month now. I believe that this video was useful to you in some way. I will see you in another useful video very soon. Until then, 
Bye-bye.